Go to Mr. Carter from Georgia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank all of you for being here. Mr. Chairman, thank you for continuing on this, this theme that we have started with the Energy and Commerce Committee this year, and that is about unleashing American energy. This is extremely important. We've all seen and, and witnessed what happens when we, when, when we neglect American energy dominance and, and our own independence. And it's, it's to our own detriment. We, it results in high energy prices and diminished supply chains, and th that's why I'm really happy that we continue to, to focus on this. And we know about supply chains, but there's perhaps nothing more important in supply chains when we talk about them than critical minerals. That has to be perhaps one, uh, if not the most glaring weaknesses that we have. All of you have mentioned our, our dependence on China for for critical minerals and how that needs to end, and we all recognize that. And and we've got legislation in this package to, to fix that. And I want to talk about some of that because I'm eager to talk about a bill that I'm introducing. And it has to do with the Solid Waste Disposal Act. And it has to do with mining. As I understand it, um, when you get a mining permit, you get the first permit, then you have to, if, if you're going to keep the hazardous waste for longer than 90 days, you have to get a second permit. But while you're waiting on that second bill, permit, what my legislation, what this legislation will do will be to give you an interim permit, if you will, until you can go through the process to get the second permit. So I think it makes a lot of sense. It helps us with our our supply chain for for critical minerals, and, and it needs to be done now because there's no time to waste. We've got to address this issue right now. No, it's not a silver bullet, but I think it is a, a, a fix that will help us tremendously. Ms. Sweeney, I want to go to you, and I want to ask you because it's, it's interesting. You say in your written testimony, and I quote, an average of seven to ten years to secure um, – it, it takes an average of, ten, of seven to ten years to secure one of the longest permitting process in the world for mining projects to receive necessary permits to even begin to build the mine project. And then you compare this to Canada and Australia who have kind of similar environmental uh, regulations as we have, and, and in there it only takes them uh, a few years, two to three years to complete. How, can, how have they been able to maintain comparable environmental standards to the U.S. And, and complete the permitting process for new mines in a fraction of the time that we do? They have a lot more coordination up front of the various agencies involved, whether they be provincial, territorial, or, or the overarching Canadian government. Um, they are try, seeking to do, like, one-stop permitting shopping. Um, they also allow... Um, the project proponent to prepare the environmental impact statement, um, which in, um, really involves a lot of efficiencies because you're not waiting for the agencies to have to do that. But the federal, but the government does oversee that to make sure that ever, the rigorous rules are. So there are a lot of lessons we could learn from them, and, and a lot of good takeaways from Absolutely. them. What would be one of the, the most immediate that, that could help us? Um, upfronting litigation. I think that's something in Canada that they are focused on and um, getting that done so you're not at the end of your 10-year process, just entering into the litigation that could add another 10 years before you can actually start operations. Good, good. Okay, I want to go to Mr. McMe, and um, when we talk about unleashing American energy, part of that is the structure of the market that the energy goes into. Can you help me out? Um, restructured electricity markets like regional transmission organizations, RTOs, do they lead to lower rates? Do they lead to, to greater reliability? I mean, tell me what the advantage, if there is any, of these are. They don't, and the RTOs were originally structured on the idea to use market forces to get efficiencies. But the problem is, is that there are seven RTOs in the country, six of them regulated by FERC. The problem is, is that they use marginal price pricing to set power prices, so you get bids in by each of the generators into to bid to meet every five minutes of what the energy needed. And the problem is, is usually natural gas does set the clearing price on that, but every other resource is getting paid that natural gas price. So if you're a subsidized renewable, you have no fuel costs, you have tax credits, yet you're getting paid the natural gas price. 
So the economic benefits of renewables are not passing through to customers, hence the reason energy prices keep going up despite adding all these renewables. And then secondly, you've got a reliability problem because none of these generators are like your utility. None of them have an obligation to serve. And so they bid in. If they're picked, they run. If they don't, but then you have problems like you had in Texas, which you've seen also in this past winter, where there's no incentive to winterize your unit because you're like, well, why should I do it? I'm, if it's going to make it more expensive. What you want is a system that allows, the, that is designed to serve the people, and you need reliability is the Good. number one thing. Well, thank you all. And again, this permitting process is crushing us. We have got to do something about it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Gentlemen, uh, 